Hello everybody and welcome to my videos. My name is Harry and I have been in the shadows for quite some time but I am back and I have created an FPS game and I would like you guys along with other developers to help me with it. Let's do this. So a quick explanation is that I'm creating an FPS and I want you guys to follow my journey. So I'll be going through this entire video. I'll be building maps, making movement mechanics, making you know everything you need. I also want you guys to get involved so we'll be doing votes and you guys can create some content for this if you want to. So yeah, let's go ahead and get right into it. And let me show you how this system works. As you can see, we have an FPS system now. This is looking really quite nice. So we have an AR here, which is the M16A1. As you see, we have things like warbang mechanics here, where we have this. We don't have anything like aim down sights or anything, because I don't know, we wanted it to be more like CSGO and Valorant. So we also have another weapon, which is the pistol. Here you see we can change weapons. This works on mobile and Xbox. I mean, the animations are a bit clunky, I can say, because well they're made by me and I'm obviously not an animator and then finally we have our SMG here which looks like you have aim down sights but sadly we don't have that yet but yeah right now it's looking pretty standard so yeah let's start off by making some maps okay so to start with guys I'm going to be making a map so in the middle here I want this to be yeah I want this to be the size of our map now my idea is is to make in an FPS map you want to give people an endless ride we don't want at any point for people to find a dead end so my idea is to make sort of a loop around the edge and yeah so let me just flatten this area and I'll be right back okay then I can say this as well guys start from the outside and work your way in let me just get rid of this and yeah let's get started let's do this the best way to make an FPS map right now is to make something called a map layout which means pretty much you make it all out of uh, the default parts and then with that default part you then can texture and stylize it and stuff like that we're also going to plunk a a little rig in here just so we can see to scale what it's going to feel like okay it's looking good if we then just scale this up but yeah what i'm doing right now is i'm making it out of the standard sort of part here because what we want to do is we want to be able to know what it feels like and kind of like walk around rather than having to like you know start by doing in-depth texturing what this allows is it allows people to you know get a solid view of what their fps map's going to look like you can make alterations you know before and after everything so let me just do this uh yeah also i'm using something called f3x building tools which is probably the best option for anyone wanting to build anything really because they're simply the best okay you know you can use the, my favorite part about it is definitely the idea of using keybinds to change between things i find that extremely useful uh i don't know i just find it really nice really easy to use rather than having to constantly you know sort of like click between the little awkward things up here so yeah let me just start by continuing with the outskirts of the map okay guys another thing you should add to your fps maps is something what i'm doing here which is like cover so here i've actually like you know well, not really cover mainly interiors because what that will do is allow users to kind of go close range and sneak up on their enemies i'm not sure we can have a a little turret area i will use something called a truss to expand that okay so with the truss what we're gonna do let me just make this because that's out of line let me just hit this on the z-axis and then just bring it across like that we can go into model and we can add something called a truss a truss is pretty much what just used to no we can't go model sorry we go to workspace add and we add something called a truss part because a truss what it is is it simply an object which is used to climb up anything so i want to make it so you can climb up this in this little corner here so it's not you know right up in the open because we do not want that either so yeah let me just expand this using the x x x button sorry I keep on calling it the axis i'm sorry i'm so used to that all right bring that like this now obviously we can invisibilize make this change its looks but right now i i kind of think it'll suit the standard little part area okay as i don't want to keep you waiting i'm going to do and show you how to texture these buildings before we then go in and actually add some things such as movement so what we're going to do to texture these buildings from here i'm going to do this one here because this looks no i want to do this one here it looks interesting so what i want to do here is i want to go like this and change the material i'm going to make it concrete and uh, i'll make this one concrete as well because you know we want it to keep that sort of theme um, what we also want to do is as you can see it looks really plain it doesn't look like it's honestly got anything this truss here I actually do like the kind of truss effect I think it does look really sort of I don't know it looks like a fun battleground to fight on so I'm not going to change that what I am going to do though 
is I am going to add something to this sort of bland wall because we don't want a repeating texture all the time. So what I'm going to go is into, into the toolbox, go to these models, change this to images and then you can actually go ahead and add search for a texture, well not especially a texture, I'm going to search up the word uh, grime because what that would do is we can get some cool effect. Alright so this is the kind of thing I'm looking for, if we then uh, just click on this uh, it will add it in as a image. We can click on this part here and we'll copy it and then paste it into this part. Now this will, sh it looks like it popped up on this face at the back. So you may think it looks a bit weird. Well, it doesn't actually, if we put this to the back face at the front, what we can then do is we can go ahead and change the transparency and increase it quite a bit. And as you can see, that looks a lot better. That really looks like it's a genuinely damaged and war-torn wall look like that okay see how much more realistic and advanced these walls look actually what i'm going to do for this side face here is i'm actually going to delete this and i want to add this effecting because i think it looks cool if i get this and put it into the part and i make it the left face okay yeah that's going to look cool if I just decrease the tr increase sorry the transparency quite a bit look at that that looks really really nice okay now let's go ahead and add some uh, sort of decorations for the top here so the best thing to do is to kind of add some parts like this and what we're gonna do put it in the corner and we add some kind of I don't know chimney pipe something where players can take cover for so something like this okay I think probably diamond plates probably the best option so yeah like up here we can have sort of one of these and then we can duplicate this and decrease its size drag it across just like that uh, yeah like that we just want sort of something like that to add a little bit more looks into this we can also then change this truss into something I think sand, yeah that, that looks cool for the truss, maybe make it a bright colour so people can actually see that it's there, because I want that to be a key point factor, okay yeah that's looking really cool, and then up here we're going to add an area so the player will be able to wall bang through, so if we line this up, uh, I'm actually going to duplicate this one more time, bring it to the corner and then double its size a little bit and then bring that down, to just to add as I say, it's all about the sort of small little things that really make such a big difference to this. Okay, like that, and then just bring that down to there. Very cool. But yeah, this this here should be their th thickness. Uh, size, I think that's more than thick, so we need to make it 0.5. And then here again, 0.5, because that's the penetration distance of the bullets right now. And then here we'll make this uh, sand, I think thing no definitely not we'll make that concrete like the other and there we go that is how we texture a building now this is a, obviously a very basic idea let me just duplicate this and bring it across just like that and then do the same for this side and bring it across just like that all right that looks really cool okay so for the movement of our game we are going to be using something called ikpf okay which is inverse schematics procedural foot planting which pretty much means uh, well it's using phantom forces it means that instead of using an actual physical animation for the legs to move instead it's mathematically calculated so for example instead of it you know going to the animation editor and making so you run instead it animates and mathematically makes it so you can you know walk sideways walk upstairs like an example here everything is really well calculated and it looks amazing in fps's especially for movement ideas so yeah we're using this today and yeah i also believe that this movement system is using this game here called uh no scope arcade i know it's using the other game no scope sniping can i get this all right my aim is on point today <laughs> um <laughs> slide in here yeah, as you can see, this is used in this little game here, which is called No Scope Arcade, which is a really, really fun game. I think it's sort of No Scope Sniping 2, if you've ever played the original game. It's pretty fun. Can I hit this guy? Oh, God, guess not. Uh, oh, can I melee? Can I melee? Can I melee? Can I melee? All right, let's go. I won the game. But yeah, it's using this game mode, which, you know, looks really cool. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're actually going to uh, go to the library here and press get. And when we got this... We can now go back into our toolbox and grab it. All right, I've got the script now. I believe this goes, yes, yeah, starter player scripts. If we get this and we'll put it into our starter player scripts here. 
and yeah let's check it out okay everybody as you can see it does look a bit weird i mean yeah it looks a bit funny but when we're in game of course it's gonna look brilliant when everyone's running around so yeah look a quick diagram by the way guys of how much damage these things do uh, pistol here does uh, 40 to the body and it does 60 something to the head the uh, ump here it does preloaded damage but yeah 18 but and it has a i think it's got a two times headshot multiplier can't really see because right now we're not really that much but still yeah there's there's a load of um headshot multipliers on these things but yeah this is 40 to the body 60 something to the head m16a4 obviously does more damage as an assault rifle but yeah all these weapons are pretty well balanced we've tested them in pvp and they work really well so yeah there's movement sorted let's try something else okay so if you are wondering how we do the hurt gui here as you can see it's a billboard gui with a little text file in here this has all our you know information of what the text looks like i'm actually interested in making the actual text transfer look here so as you see, this is what it looks like. Um, the font. I'm gonna. I'm actually trying to attempt to change the color to a kind of uh, lighter red. I guess you could call it a lighter red. Sort of. No, nah, I'm joking. I'm. No, nah, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Let's just make it the nice bright red it was before. There we go. So that's what the text uh, looks like. So yeah, we can kind of edit that. But yeah, I'll. I'll actually put this in my Discord server in the resources panel if you guys want to use it. Okay, so here is the spawn function. So what this does is it makes sure that the text is transparency equals to I, which is either one or zero, depending on uh, the spawn. And then here, this is just defining some uh, variables. And then it's working out the stud offset of the uh, player compared, you as a player compared to where the actual physical place is. And what this is all saying is when it's done, it destroys it. So this is the script. Um, this is then put inside another script, which is the uh, inside of Sarge GUI. And inside here, what this does is just make sure when it hits uh, everything, what it does is it just changes the text. Uh, okay, so here, math.4 change by 0.5. If it dies, it disconnects it and it searches for the children to make sure it's all available. And that is pretty much the damage indicator. It's quite simple. Coming next on our devlog will be either two things. Number one will be the mini map, or number two will be finishing off this map. It is up to you guys to tell me which one of those things you would like to see. So please tell me ASAP. I'll be launching a little vote in my Discord server, so please make sure you go and see that, because that is where we're doing it on. So yeah, here's a quick little gameplay of me with the zombies. As you see, humanoid penetration works pretty nicely. You can kind of... You know, ah, got this guy here. You got the um, my favorite hit. I like that. I'm gonna do the M16 A A1. Sorry, I was gonna say A4 there for factor forces. But yeah, that's that really. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next devlog.